Hello everyone, let's talk about the different WestGuard multi rule that are applied in the laboratory quality control system. Now you know what the Levigenics chart is, it's now time to learn the WestGuard multi rule system because the Levigenics and the WestGuard rules work hand in hand together. This multi rule system was developed by WestGuard and Groth. This provides the criterion for judging whether the analytical process is out of control. As mentioned earlier, the Levy Jennings can determine all random and systematic errors in the analytical phase. So, to simplify the various control rules, WestGuard and Groth use abbreviations for the various control rules. There are six common rules in the multi-rule system. We have the 12S, 13S, 22S, R4S, 41S, and the 10X or the 10 mean. The multi-rule system is the 12S. As the name implies, there is one control value which is outside the two standard deviations. Now this out of control value can either be on the positive side or on the negative side. A 1-2-S violation is, is a random error. So here is our chart. So the black line in the middle is the mean and then we have our standard deviations plotted. So for example, we have a value like this one which is located outside the two standard deviation. Then that means that it violates the 1-2-S rule. As said here, it can either be on the positive side or on the negative side. Either side, it is located as long as it is outside the two standard deviation, it's considered as a violation to the 1-2-S rule. So what now if there is a 1-2-S rule? This is known as the warning rule. So what will you do with the specimen? You accept it because it's just warning you that there might be something wrong. So what do you do then if there is a warning rule? This would alert the technologist of possible problems. What you do next is you have to start looking for errors, look at other controls or look at previous results. Okay? Do not reject the result. You can accept the result and continue with your testing. one would be the 13S rule. So this means that there is one control value located outside the three standard deviation. It can also be either on the positive or the negative side and this is also considered as a random error. So given our chart, if our data is outside the 3SD, either like this one on the negative side and it can also be on the positive side, then this is the violation of the 13S rule. If we have the 13S violation, we need to reject the results. Okay, hindi tayo pwede mag-continue with testing. We need to reject the results that were run together with this control. Why? Because a 13S identifies an unacceptable random error. This may also be possibly the beginning of a very large systematic error. So we need to reject everything. So these are two consecutive control values that are outside the two standard deviation. And these two consecutive control values should be on the same side. They can be both on the positive side or both on the negative side. Now this now reflects a systematic error. It's considered systematic because these are already consecutive control values. Remember, systematic error um, is more on being or having precision results but not accurate results. So for example here, we have two values consecutively right after one another outside the two standard deviation. It can be both on the positive side or both on the negative side. That is the violation of the 2-2-S rule. What do you do? We reject the um, specimens that were run together with this control as well. would be the R4S. So this means that there are two consecutive control values outside the 2SD on opposite sides. So parang kabalik na rin to ni 22S. 22S dapat magkasunod sila na magkatabi. But for R4S, 
these are two consecutive control values outside um, 2 to SD on opposite sides. So, dapat yung isa nasa positive, yung isa nasa negative. Tapos, dapat magkasunod sila and both of them are outside the two standard deviations. This is considered as a random error since hindi naman magkatabi or magkalapit yung results. What do you do? We also reject um, the results coming from these controls. One control measurement that excess that is in excess of the two standard deviation and another should exceed the negative. So one positive, one negative, that would be the R4S. Our fifth rule is the 41S. So these are four consecutive control values located outside one SD. And these should be on the same side. This is a form of systematic error. So this is an example of the 41S rule. So all of them are on one side and there should be a minimum of four consecutive control values and all of them should be under 1S. It can either be on the positive side, they can also be on the negative side. So here it is on the negative side. What do we do? With this systematic error, we also reject. The last rule would be the 10x rule. So these are 10 consecutive control values on the same side of the mean. So this is also a systematic error. So here is a 10x violation. So there are 10 values, all of them are on one side. It doesn't matter if it is on the 1, 2, or 3, as long as there are 10 values consecutive on one side of the mean. So it can be on the positive side or it can be on the negative side. Of course, when we have a result like this, we are to reject the specimens that have been tested. So this detects the bias. This is an accuracy problem. Wala mang nandun sa mean. It, that means that there are the values we're not able to detect the mean. They are all just on one side. So reject the specimen. So these are the follow-up actions that we have been mentioning since earlier. Either we accept or we reject. Okay. When we say accept, that means we have to accept the test run in its completeness. Now, this usually applies only when there is a warning rule violated. When we say reject, the whole test run should be rejected. When we make a decision to accept the test run, it means that only a warning rule was violated and that warning rule is 1-2-S. What we do then is that we use the other rules to inspect the control points to make sure that there are no other rules violated. So again, a warning rule would mean that all results generated together with that control is considered accepted. When we have the reject rule on the other hand, so that means those are all the other violations except for 1-2-S, what do we do? We have to stop the testing because um, things uh, because that means that the quality control is no longer um, reliable. They, we have to identify and correct the problem first before we continue testing. We also have to repeat the test on the samples and the controls. Remember, controls are processed together with the samples. So if the controls in the Levy Jennings would show any violation, that means all the samples that were processed or run together with that control will also be invalid. So that means you have to repeat the test on all of those samples first. Do not release the results um, of these samples until the problem is resolved and the controls should indicate the proper performance of the machine. So that's what happens when we have a reject. That is all for the WestGuard rules. There are other WestGuard rules that can be applied in the laboratory. Comment down below if you want me to make a video about it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.